Okay, we're back for the final wrap-up segment of SAP Sapphire Now 2012 in Orlando. This is live the Cube. I'm John Furrier, uh, founder of SiliconAngle.com. I want to just say uh, thanks everyone for watching. Thanks to Mark, Kian, and uh, Mick uh, for working it. And uh, I'm joined with my co-host here, Jeff Kelly. Dave Vellante will join us in a minute. Jeff, uh, analyst at Wikibon, Big Data, SAP analyst. Um, we're going to wrap up the segment here. Day three mm -hmm. is ending. Um, Dave will join us. Uh, what's your take on uh, the story here? I mean, from my standpoint, SAP is, again, last year was the great messaging. I mean, this year they advanced the ball down the mm -hmm. field. They're positioned well with in-memory, cloud, mobile, social. Um, very well positioned. Again, they're in transition from a on-premise mm -hmm. ERP company to cloud, where mobility is their touch point for the customer. Everything in between, in memory and analytics, will drive that value proposition. So, um, a lot of change. Mm -hmm. What's your take? Uh, well, I think you know I had a few things I was looking for coming into the show. Uh, one of them was to see some more customers on display uh, actually using Hana in production, uh, and we got that. So I, I was happy to see that. Um, you know, last year was a lot of talk about vision, a lot of talk about future benefits. This year, we saw them actually execute to some degree. Uh, they've got to continue that, of course, but that's a good sign from them. Um, you know, they also expanded their, uh, or I should say, took the uh, big data term for their for, for their own, and they've actually kind of embraced it, but with their own spin. Um, I think last year we called their approach fast data. I think I would also add practical to that uh, d d that definition um, description. Uh, I think what they're what they're trying to do is make uh, big data a reality for their customers in the in the near term, uh, and for their customers. Uh, that means mostly SAP data. That means you know multiple, perhaps tens of terabytes. They've got one uh, customer, Hilti, with a, a 40 terabyte uh, scale out on a deployment. Who, who I uh, spoke to earlier today. Uh, so they're trying to make big data practical for their customers, which, for the most part, you know involves tens of terabytes of data. It's not the petabyte level. It's not Yahoo. It's not Facebook. Uh, so for their customers, I think this is a really good approach. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, in my summary, I, I would agree with that. I would add that at a very high level, what's happening here at SAP this year, to wrap things up, was everything was centered around one major gravitational pull, and that was HANA. HANA was the big project that's out there. Uh, year two of, of, of HANA, they really wanted to make it real, and that was really the, the thrust of it. Here on day three, the keynotes from uh, the co-founder, Hasso, and Platner, and, and, and um, Michelle Sitka, the tech lead, uh, tech gurus, was all about HANA. Highly technical conversation. Now, day one, Bill McDermott was talking about mobile, the sex appeal, the analytics, the business benefits of, of analytics and mobile. Um, and then in between, you had cloud and success factors. That big acquisition for $3.4 mm -hmm. billion dollars is, is, was the key showcase there, telling their customers that we are going to be a cloud company. SAP moving from on-prem to the cloud, but not leaving on-prem by itself. So on-premise solutions will still be there. They'll be core, but you see a lot more cloud. And then um, finally, developers. You're seeing application developers. You're seeing SAP reach out this show and say, hey, you know what? We're going to go after some new developers. We need new developers. So their ecosystem will have to be strong. And that's really the big story here. HANA mm -hmm. as, at the foundation, mm -hmm. app developers expanding that base, analytics and mobile, the sex appeal, mm -hmm. the edge of the network cloud powering the on-premise cloud combination. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think that's my takeaway. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that's cool. And what's different from last year? More customer showcasing. Right. Right. And I would, I would say, you know, one thing they need to be careful about is HANA overkill. I mean, it is central to what they're doing. But, you know, I, I have heard, you know, some whispers around the, the, uh, the conference that, you know, all we're hearing about is HANA. And the reality is the majority, vast majority of their customers are still the, those ERP on-premise uh, deployments. So they've they've got to be careful not to give short shrift to those to those customers. And that's the same that's the same balancing act they've been yeah, uh, they've been challenged with since last year. But I, I do I would say that this definitely kind of overkill. But one thing, an area I would say they didn't really exploit, uh, in my opinion, is big data. Um, this is a big data company, clearly. I talked to the founders about that. I mean, the CEOs about that. They agree, but they don't want to be associated with the hype of big data. I think that's a huge mistake for SAP not to really put the flag on the ground and saying, we are a big data mm -hmm. company. Big data being defined by, by their definition. Second thing is in memory. In memory intersects beautifully with the trends that we're covering. Mm -hmm. um, 
flash, fusion I.O., violin, AMC by Extreme I.O. So in the storage and ever-evolving I.O. landscape of the architecture, in-memory is really important. So I think not enough explanation or storytelling around what in-memory means, and certainly a massive miss by SAP in the positioning around big data. I think that's a big mistake on this trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, they've made clearly a strategic decision to place themselves outside of that big data hype, if you will. Uh, and rather than join that group, they want to contrast their approach, practical big data, as I'm calling it. So and I think, uh, I don't know if Mark can go to that clip uh, we have with, um, can you go to that clip with um, the CEOs? The other big story here was the, the, the coming out of Lars, the mm -hmm. CEO of Success Factors. The interesting storyline on this guy is that he's a strong leader of a startup that's been very, very successful, Success Factors huge price, $3.4 billion that SAP paid to essentially show the commitment to the cloud, really, is what they're doing. Absolutely. But SAP is walking the talk, they're moving people over. So um, I want to show you a clip of uh, an interaction we had last night uh, with the CEO, Bill McDermott, and um, Lars, uh, the CEO of uh, Success Factors. If we can pull that up. Um, okay, here we go. So look, look at the smiling faces. <laughs> they're like... This was at the uh, Global Communications Press, Global Press uh, um, Networking uh, Dinner, and uh, had a chance to talk to Bill McDermott. But look at this. Bill McDermott is ecstatic because this guy from Success Factors, Lars, is dynamic. He's tall. They even joke about him being from Denmark. That's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, he's from Denmark. But he's a tall guy. They're all tall guys. They're athletes. They're competitive. And what I really admired about these two guys is they're, they're kind of partying in suits on but ultimately um, the the DNA culture of SAP is that they're competitive and you see that with success factors the guy is very happy they, they love each other kind of you know programmers as we used to we call them um, but they're really competitive um, trying to get both guys in the cube they were too busy doing customer mm -hmm. meetings but hopefully get them next time right they really show the commitment to you know this is not just a tactical acquisition this is really a big picture uh, transition to the cloud uh, acquisition. For them. Yeah, and when I talked with him um, in the one-on-one -on -one with Lars, I said to him, you know, what's going on? He said that he's building a core engine that has social embedded in everything that they do. So um, the guy totally gets social. Now, the interesting story about Lars is very successful company built in the, in the cloud from day one, integrating into a culture of SAP. We're going to see how that works. How long will he last? Will he be one of those executives that stay, do, the, do the minimum and then bolt out with the cash? Or will we stay with SAP? We'll be following that. We'll be watching that very closely. Um, Bill McDermott and uh, Schnabe really on message around mobile in, in memory mm -hmm. analytics and uh, cloud. So overall, great show. Uh, Dave Vellante is joining us too. Is Dave, you uh, have anything to say you want to add to the, to the wrap-up? Well, I do think that... Um Right, Jeff, that the marketing is ahead of the actual implementation, but that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, we're seeing, I've said this before in the Cube, the enterprise business is an oligopoly, and the chessboard is controlled by five or six big players. We know who they are. SAP is one of them. You know, I've said many times, John, that uh, EMC slash VMware will, will be the next $100 billion market cap company. Well, SAP's ahead of them. You know, they're at you know, $70 billion and they could get there faster. So. SAP's got you know fantastic marketing. It's a, like a political convention here. Yeah. All the talking points are there. They got the customers with the microphones in the audience. It's all really well choreographed. The company has to prove that it can actually deliver on that vision. And it's had some missteps in the past. And you know it's going after Oracle and Oracle's core business. Um, at the same time, it's got a really loyal customer base. It's got a massive customer base, 197,000 customers. And I think you know it will get to 100 billion. You know. We'll see who gets there faster. I think EMC and VMware are probably on a faster trajectory, but but uh, but SAP is a little a little larger and has the better business model from a market cap standpoint. So, at any rate, that aside, I think that what we've seen is the evolution of and transformation of SAP, led by the two co-CEOs, Bill McDermott, Jim Hageman Schnabe. They really complement each other well. Um, Hasso Plotner, the company's founder still very much involved and so I like that John I you can love see the, the video of the two guys up there right now from um, my press conference I had the chance to ask them in the front row there getting questions Q&A uh, the global press corps there so it's really good interviews there um, the, the co-CEO could things working yeah. I'm just going to mention that yeah that's that's not easy to pull off I mean what's what's your take what, what do you think uh, I think it's working out great I think 
I think Schnabe is coming into his own and as a product guy, tech guy, and I think that uh, McDermott clearly is an operating on the state of the market side of the video. It's very polished. And their keynotes absolutely demonstrate their positioning. Um, keynote on day one, Bill McDermott talking about the politician, very thespian-like. I thought that was, was a Shakespearean play meets <laughs> Bill Clinton press conference. Um, and they had all this provocative conversation, the language he's choosing, um, laced with buzzwords, you know, future, uh, analytics. I heard breathtaking a um, yeah. number of times. So yeah. it was a, quite the performance. Schnabe, nuts and bolts, right down to business, all tech, all business all the time. Really good content on both sides. Schnabe is much more in-depth, talking about the future of social networking being more business-oriented. And that's really was, was to me, a great takeaway around, around that next issue. Clearly, Schnabe, innovation is the key to his story. Um, he talks about innovation investments um, and innovation strategy. He also said that word six times in his keynote. And it's clear. It's analytics, in-memory, mobile, cloud, applications. So to them, it's pretty clear. Any, any final words, Dave, here at SAP? We had a great time. Uh, great support from SAP. Um, without SAP's great support, um, I want to say everyone in the GC, uh, SAP's GC group, I want to thank you for all your hospitality. Uh, it's been great interactions with you this week, and we really appreciate that. And this great independent program would not be possible without the support of SAP and EMC, who have believed in our independent broadcasting model and allow us to come here and underwrite some of the support throughout the year. So we really appreciate SAP and EMC. Yeah, looking forward to the Van Halen tonight. It's a chance for everybody just jams into buses. They they jam it to the Coliseum or you know, whatever venue it is and uh, it relaxes. It's, you know, everybody dresses down. And it's, it'll, be, uh, it'll be a good time. Thanks to the team back home, Kristen Nicole running the show, Art Lindsay, Stu Miniman, David Butler, uh, all the folks on the ground uh, here, Mark, Kean, Mick, Jones. Great job, guys. Uh, did I leave anyone else out? Oh, Alex Williams. Oh, Alex Williams is here in the cube. He's out there scouring stories right now. We'll see him tonight. Uh, great event. And I want to say this, is a, this has been a great opportunity to get more knowledgeable about SAP. SAP and uh, Jeff, thanks for coming on as well. Thanks for having um, me. That's a wrap from day three. We're going to shut down the cube. We'll see you next week at EMC World in Las Vegas. And on Wednesday, we have the HBase Conference in San Francisco. So on Wednesday, we're going to have two programs. HBase conference and EMC. And then after that, we have the summer tour. Look for it on siliconangle.com and wikibon.org and siliconangle.tv. So thank you for watching. Have a great night. And, uh, That's see you a wrap. Time. See you, everybody.